So AOC sat down for an interview with Chuck Todd. Um, I call him human oatmeal because that's what he is. So um, let's see what she says about what the left is looking for in a 2020 candidate. I think what is how do you define economic justice, though? So when we talk about things like the, the role of the labor movement, the role of labor in, in the working conditions of everyday Americans, when we talk about fighting doggedly for workers, for uh, whether it's wages, whether it's union jobs, whether it's good jobs, um, I think that is what we're really talking about in terms of, of fighting for economic justice. What um, is there, so you, you've said that on, on the issues of race, on the issues I assume gender falls into that too, but I think those are, the, you would assume you just couldn't get traction on that. Are there specific red lines for you? Medicare for all, do you have to say you'll do it? Or is being aspiring to it in the future enough for you? So I think that we need, we need commitments with teeth. So I don't want to be placated as a progressive. And I know that the progressive movement does not want to be placated in 2020. It's like, but I yeah, guess, I yeah. guess, what's the definition? So you have, for instance, Amy Klobuchar and Sherrod Brown, I, I think are both are arguing that they love Medicare for all, but they're like, it's not realistic. Let's fix Obamacare or let's do Medicare yeah. 50, Medicare me, 55. Would that be a non-starter for you? For me, I, I reject that outright. I reject the rationale. Okay. I reject the rationale of saying, Adopting the same insurance models or a similar insurance model to any other developed country in America is unrealistic. I reject that. I reject the idea that single payer is, is um, impossible. I reject the idea that universal health care is impossible. All of these things are possible. When we talk about what I want in a 2020 candidate, I want a 2020 candidate that says we can do these things. We can be audacious. I think we need, in order to overcome this moment, we need to return to our FDR roots as a party. That's what I believe. Okay, this is wonderful because what she's doing is she's moving the Overton window in Washington, D.C. Now, what she just said there is not it's not extreme. It's not radical. In fact, it's the discourse that's been going on in left circles for decades. It's, you know, you come here and you hear stuff like this on a regular basis. And to you, it's totally unsurprising. And in fact, it's obvious. But the reality is human oatmeal has not heard this before. Um, other people in Washington, D.C. have not heard this before. The people on Wall Street have not heard this before. Power centers have not heard this before. And... It's about time that the dialogue that's happening among regular people throughout the country, it's about time that that dialogue at least makes an appearance in Washington, D.C. Now, remember, she's not all of Congress. She represents basically the left flank of Congress, even though she's pretty internationally moderate and moderate in terms of she's a centrist among the will of actual people in this country. But she represents the left flank in Congress. But nobody was saying these things. Obviously, Bernie was saying these things. But outside of Bernie, nobody was saying these things. And then now they're finally being uttered. And you have amusement. Like, Chuck Todd is, like, asking these questions as if, again, the answers aren't obvious. Like, oh, is Medicare for all a red line? Polls show 70% of Americans want Medicare for all. Even a majority of Republicans want Medicare for all now. Honestly, what a dumb question. It is. It's dumb. Now, but her answer is basically exactly correct, which is the left is tired of being placated because that's all we do is we get placated. Why is it that right wing politicians super serve their base? Democratic politicians always betray their base. That's what happens every time. That's what happens. So AOC is stepping up here and saying, well, yeah, that is kind of a red line and I don't. It, you have to understand something. It's just wrong. So when people like Sherrod Brown say, among others, like, oh, it's just not practical. No, what's not practical is keeping our current system where we spend more than the rest of the developed world and we get worse outcomes and we don't even cover everybody. Okay? What, what is practical is getting a system that's $5 trillion cheaper over a decade and covers everybody and reduces price. So... You're just wrong. Like, the things you're saying are just incorrect, and I'm here to correct it. And that's exactly what she does. And she's moving this Overton window back to a, a spectrum of debate that's reasonable, where now she's saying, 
look, to sum up our position, it's that the Democratic Party needs to stop with the neoliberal centrist Bill Clinton model and needs to go back to the FDR model. Social democracy model. That's what she's asking for. And listen, FDR got elected four times. He died in office. He's the reason why we the Republicans came up with term limits. Because he was so fucking popular, he wouldn't stop winning. And the Republicans thought, if we don't do term limits, we might never win another election because the Democrats and their um, social democratic uh, ideology on economic issues is so popular that we're never going to win. So now you have somebody... In Washington, which has moved massively to the, massively to the right and pro-corporate, you have somebody coming in there, uh, bursting that bubble and saying, no, yeah, Medicare for All is kind of a litmus test. They're just wrong when they speak out against it, and we're done being placated. That's correct. So we'll see what AOC does moving forward. She said at another point in this interview, don't ask me about an endorsement until the New York primary. Okay. Um, not the direction I would go if I was her, but, uh, okay, is what it is. I don't know. My take is, and maybe I'm an old school guy, but my take is, um, you say who you agree with and you do it pretty much immediately. I just think that's more intellectually honest and, um, respectful, but that's just me. Um, anyway, happy she's moving the Overton window happy she's changing the discourse, and it's about damn time. And you know how desperately this is needed because human oatmeal is actually shocked a little bit when, she, when he hears, like, the obvious answers from AOC.